What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowd, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are back together. It feels like it's been a while. Uh, we've got a nice little eight game slate. I, you know, we, we want to start off by saying I'm very sorry for we had some site site stuff we were working on yesterday and, 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 it, and it, it crashed for a little bit. And we're sorry to everyone. It's, it's back up and running. And uh, as is the payment processing for those people who are trying to sign up, we just had a had a little glitch and it should all be taken care of. Uh, and if it's not, we will have it taken care of right away as everybody is back this week. So sorry about that. Um, but, uh, ready to get after it DFS wise. I had a decent, uh, my last day I played was Friday, I had a decent day, but as we all know, and we were in discord, it was looked like it was going to be pretty good for a while. I didn't quite get there, but, uh, ready to get after today. Sheets, how are you doing? Tell us about the AAU stuff you had going on. Yeah, then, we, we, uh, I coached, uh, with, uh, one of the big AAU recruiting tournaments over the week. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, and DFS was, I don't even know how I was able to do what I did, but I, I, I got, I was able to get most of the projections up, at least some of them. I did the best I could. I got an MMA video out. I even got the NASCAR stuff out. Um, it's, 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 it's tough in July. It's just because I'm out in the Hamptons Thursday to Sunday and, and I, I scramble to get what I can done for you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really doing my best, but, um, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, ready to, uh, get after today's slate though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's do it. Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, pull up your screen and we'll go game by game here. I think this is, you know, it's a, again, it's a smaller slate, so we should treat it as such. I don't believe we have the second of the double header on, uh, FanDuel, right? I think that there is no, uh, KC game. Yeah. There's no KC game on FanDuel, but we do have it on DraftKings. And, uh, that's kind of a big one because I think that if you're looking for pivot spots from the obvious scores chalk, that's going to be one of them. But we'll start off. We'll do the draft. We'll do it the DraftKings way. We'll go uh, game by game, and we'll start with the White Sox and Cleveland. Um, right now, I currently have nothing in this game uh, from a pitching standpoint. I'm definitely open to the idea of using Lynn as a pivot, but I don't feel good about it against Cleveland, who's a low strikeout team. We'll have enough lefties to get to them, um, and then both offenses. I think you could make it. You can make an interesting case because they're going to be off the chalk. You know, you've got you've got a pitcher in Quantrill who doesn't you know doesn't strike anybody out. And you've got a guy in Lynn who really struggles with lefties and a few lefties that you'd want to play, like especially uh, Jose Ramirez, Stephen Kwan uh, would be the two that stand out. And then maybe depending on who else they throw in the lineup, whether it's Jimenez or, uh, you know, even Nolan Jones at the bottom of the lineup to round out a stack. So I don't mind it. It's not a priority for me, but I do like Jose Ramirez is a priority. Stephen Kwan on FanDuel 25, 34 on DraftKings. Those guys make a lot of sense. And I think you're going to get low ownership on the White Sox. Gavin Sheets has been swinging the bat pretty well, so he's a good value option. That's pretty much all I have for this game. Yeah, this is actually my my uh, my game here um, because uh, again, it's a short slate, and you know the 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 Coors game is going to be you know where all the ownership goes. So you're kind of looking for pivots, and and the first one I identified was the one that you just kind of alluded to was kind of KC, but then like b- below that. I have Cleveland and Chicago is basically my next two. So uh, I, I, I definitely have some interest in this game from the hitting side, just for no other reason. Cause again, I just don't feel like playing San Diego at a hundred, hundred percent ownership. So right. uh, I, I actually do like uh, both these hitting teams. Um, and, you know, as, as, as you say all the time, but I'm going to probably say this time, I don't know if you, you need to go five man today. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I probably, you know, if I can get like three or four out of this game, uh, like a three man stack or a four man stack, I think that's, I think that's good enough. You know what I mean? Because if, if you're, if you're betting on San Diego to fail, um, if they do fail, I, I don't, I don't want to lose because I got too greedy with my, you know what I mean? Like, like, mm-hmm. like demanding a full five man stack come in. So I'm just kind of like picking around here and probably going to take, like you said, like the Ramirez and Quan from that side. Um, White Sox, you know, the, the, just the, the top guys, like Anderson, Abreu, Robert, Gavin Sheets, like you mentioned, even Andrew Vaughn, but you don't have to play all five of them, I don't think, today. Yeah, I, I totally agree with all of that um, that you said right there. All right, um, Boston, Tampa Bay. Uh, I am going to play some Brian Bello today, and I'm not at all alarmed that he had a bad first start that against the same team, and especially because it was in Boston. I will go right back to it and gamble on it. Um, and I am going to play some Brian Bello. If the only thing is, is what am I really needing to save money for? It's really just another pitcher that can, you know, get me points. I, I don't have 
I mean, I don't think you need to save. It's not like they, they didn't, they, they, I don't know if they priced San Diego way down in Colorado. But just oh yeah. Hosmer is a, a big whopping 2,100. Yeah, seriously. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I, but I still am interested a little bit in Brian Bello. And if you're going to try, I, I don't like stat, like Boston is not, you know, they, they hit about, what do they hit? 20% less, no, almost 30% less <clears throat> home runs on the road than they do at home. Um but you have some reasonable prices on guys who are going to face the lefty and the long reliever in Fleming, like JD Martinez at 4,100 um, smaller slate. So I think it's worth pointing out JD and Trevor story, especially, but I, I don't, I don't particularly have interest in, in either of the hitting sides of this game, uh, except, you know, as a stack. That's, um, that's pretty weird that JD Martinez is 40, only 4,100. Um, it is weird. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think Bella rates is the, as to me, I mean, the clear points per dollar are spend down, right. Uh, right. uh, pitcher. So if you do want to, if you want to get a little, um, like off the board, I guess I, you could say where, why would you play Bella? Like if you want to like overpay for like a pivot stack some way, you know what I mean? I don't even look at the actual pricing, but like, let's just say that, I'm, I'm, let me pull up Cleveland for, for a second, or let's let me pull up Chicago. And if like Tim Anderson was something like, yeah, that's pretty, exp- I guess that's not that expensive, but, but if you were going to play him at 5,400, um, you want to play Ramirez, uh, stuff like that. So I think you can make a case for, for being, for having Bellow being a useful pitcher to use, um, especially if you want to play anything outside of course. So let's say you want to play, I don't know, like, uh, well, you don't want to play what's his name, uh, Acuna necessarily. You could, you could, if you're not playing Scherzer in a lineup, you could play Acuna. right. No right. ownership, but um, yeah, I think, I think Bello, uh, you know, I, again, it's, it's as usual. We, I don't know if we're going to need him, but he's certainly available and a good play, yeah, exactly where I'm at. Um, all right, let's move over to uh, Philadelphia, St. Louis, and you have two good pitchers, I think, Nola, obviously. Uh, uh, is a top pit is a top play. Uh, um, it's, 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 a t- it's not that it's, it's 96 degrees. You have a team that actually is, uh, you know, didn't strike out a lot in the beginning of the year. They've been getting whiffed a lot more lately. Uh, I think Nola, you can play Nola and Scherzer pretty easily. I think that's what you probably do in cash games. I have Scherzer ahead of Nola, which we'll get to in a second, but, um, which is a little weird because I still think Scherzer might not throw all of his pitches. I mean, he threw 79 pitches in the last game because he was just the first game back in a while. And he, I mean, he had an incredible game for only 79 pitches, but, um, and I think that Mikolas is a, is a long, large field GPP play. So that, that's what I've got for this game. I'm not interested in hitting on either side. Um, I'm like looking ahead to some of these San Diego pricing. It's um, so ridiculous. No more Mazzara is, is 2K flat. <laughs> is he going to play? Oh my God. Um, I really, I, you know what? I, I, I I really would have played Chad Cool if he was pitching for Colorado. I would have done it. I totally would have done it. Um, but anyway, in, in any case, um, yeah, Noah's a good play. Uh, you know, despite the fact that you know the Cardinals are, are aren't bad, um, but you know, Noah's going to be facing nine righties or whatever he, whatever he's whatever he's facing. And uh, even though St. Louis quote unquote doesn't strike out much, I mean, Noah's you know when he gets it going, doesn't matter who he's up against. Um, yep. I have Scherzer ahead of him. Um, but like you said, in cash, I mean, cash games, you can play both these guys and play all the San Diego's. I mean, really, uh, if you want, um, but in GPPs, that's probably not what I'm going to do. Uh, with respect to Mikolas, I would rather not play him today. Uh, I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I think better things to do than, than play Mikolas. Um, but I don't really want to get to any of the hitting either. So for me, it's Nola, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think Mikolas is going to be way overlooked on this slate, and I think that it's kind of interesting that he has the leash. He's been he's been pretty damn good, and uh, Philly, Philly is not quite as scary with their current lineup construction. Uh, you know, with no with no Bryce and all that. So I, I think that Mikolas might be a guy who I end up using by the end of the day, um, just because he's going to be so low owned. Um, here are the two other, and, and then again, all pitching game, Scherzer and Freed, um, 
I am, you know, Scherzer is a two, two full strikes higher than anybody else on the K props today. Oh, is that right? And yeah, it's Atlanta who everybody thinks of as, oh, it's so scary. It's Atlanta. They can hit pretty well. Uh, they also strike out a lot and I have no worries or no problem with just loading up Scherzer as a clearly the number one. And I don't mind if you want to play freed. I, I have a different take in general on large slates. I don't agree with people who say that it doesn't matter if they're from the same game on large slates on these kind of slates. I don't mind using pitchers from the same game. And I, and I do think freed is a viable option as a pivot off of, uh, off of Nola, but you're not getting that much lower ownership, but I, but I do like him for this matchup. And, and at the same time, while I'd like that again, hot hitting weather, maybe a Pete Alonzo one off would be the, or an Acuna one off would be the only thing I would do in this game hitting wise. Go over what you just said about the, uh, the playing guys from a different game. The pitchers from the same game, everybody loves to do it. Or everybody thinks, oh, it's no problem. It's only four points or whatever. These days, four points is a lot different than what it used to be. And uh, you do have, you do, you do get some out, out, outlier pitching performances and there's guys in great spots. But when it's, when it's really hot out and you have two good hitting teams in general on, on 15 game slates, I don't generally love to play pitchers from the same games all that often. Maybe if you have an extreme umpire to go with it and a weak lineup on both sides or something, but if you have two good offenses facing two good pitchers on full slates, I'm less likely to do it on this slate. I'd be more likely to run a Scherzer freed. I personally try to avoid it. I know other people don't care. And I've heard a lot of other, a lot of other top pros who really do care and just don't do it at all. But I, I try to reserve that more for the 15 game slates, not the, not the eight gamers. Okay. Um, my, my strategy is my, my way of thinking. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I think sure is the top overall play. What is his, what is that K prop? Was he seven and a half or something? Mm-hmm. Seven and a half. Okay. So he's seven and a half. And the next one is no at five and a half. Yep. Okay. I think no is pretty reasonable at five and a half. I like that bet. I put it on, I'm, I'm, right. it's already up on my bets of the day. To, to oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. the day. Nola is one of them. Um, and freed as, as usual, he's, um, I mean, he's always a good play, sort of. You know what I mean? Like he's always, he's always. So, uh, yeah, he's the, the 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 Bueller thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Bets are good, but um, I just don't think I'm gonna do it. I I, I don't know. I, I think I think I'd rather do something else. As, yeah, as I said, than than play free. So so for me, Scherzer, I'm certainly not gonna mess around with any Atlanta hitting. Um, and I think Freed, as I said, is good enough to get me from keep me playing the Mets. And maybe the Mets are good enough to keep me from playing free. That's about it where I'm at. Yeah. I do want to point out for what it's worth, just that the Mets have been pretty good against, uh, you know, career-wise. All these guys have been, you know, they've been solid against uh, Scherzer. And just throwing it out there. But at the same time, Scherzer's got a 35% K rate against them. So, you know, they've hit him well, but he, he's also got a huge K rate. So if you want to use uh, – some of the Braves as one-offs against, uh, I said the Mets, but I, uh, the Braves one-offs against Scherzer. I certainly don't mind that either. Um, all right, we're going to get to a game that this is uh, Oakland, Texas. So this is really weird because Spencer Howard has a four and a half K prop. He hasn't, he, he did that once this year in three innings. He hasn't pitched more than four innings in a game. It is Oakland. Uh, this would be the other spend down if you wanted to, to spend down a pitcher, but Four and a half K prop. It just sort of jumped out. I thought it was going to be like two and a half or three and a half. He's been more than like 60 something pitches in a game. So I was a little surprised to see that. I mean, it is Oakland, but that's, that's a little weird. So he's the weird, the, the, the weird value guy you could use. You could use him and Bello. The problem is you just don't need to say the savings as far as I can tell. Um, I do love Texas. They are the team I will be pairing with my, where, where I'm playing some San Diego. I think that, you know, I think that the early projections are going to have them lower on. My guess is people are going to talk about them more throughout the day and you're going to see them, their ownership pick up. But Corey Seager, Adolis Garcia, Jonah Heim, Marcus Simeon being my favorites. And then you could throw Josh Smith in as a cheap third base option, although I doubt I would do that because I'm probably playing Ramirez or Machado and all my big buy-ins. Um, but uh, Nate Lowe at first base, I just think that, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be low enough owned and I like the matchup against Martinez. And, and, you know, this is just seems like a really good spot that's not getting quite the ownership, at least early in the day that, that I would have thought. But my guess is by the end of the day, that will balance out a little bit. I think Texas is just below those other two teams I mentioned as, as a pretty good pivot off of off of Coors. Um, and uh, so I do like that. And I think that Spencer Howard is, is, is a really, really good play, actually. 
Um, I, I think that if people are going to pay down, they're going to play Bellow. Um, and I just remember the last time he was slated to pitch. I mean, you were you were you were on him, and 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 I was looking. It didn't make any sense to me, but you know what? I, I it, it was the fact that, and this is like the respect play. You know what I mean? Like I I, I played like twenty percent of him just because you were playing him. You know what I mean? So I played. I you know Sorry I don't that. think he particularly had a whatever. I mean, you didn't pitch. Um, you didn't particularly have a, have a great game, whatever, but I just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard for me to put my finger on it, but I think he's, he's, he's in the, uh, as you would say, I think he's in the atmosphere right now as a good play. You know what I mean? Like in general, like when, when there's a spot for him. Um, and I think this is a perfect spot. <laughs> he's yeah. against, he's against Oakland. I think there's, I think that, that people, if they do spend down, they're going to play, they're going to play the bellow because look, Bella Bell's got all this all this upside and whatever it is. Um, and he's going to raise a good point per dollar play. And I don't know. I, th I think that if you want to pay down, I think that Spencer Howard is a very legitimate pivot off of, off of that. Um, so I, I like it. I like both. I like Texas as well. A little sneaky correlation there. But God forbid Spencer Howard can actually go the five innings and get, you know what I mean? Be eligible for the win. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm kind of in there. I'm kind of in there. Yeah, I, 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 I just I have very, very big concerns about his his how many pitches they're going to let him throw. Um, whereas I think that like Bellow, you know, threw 80 as he struggled in his first game or 79. Howard still hasn't gotten in this above the 60s and and don't really see signs of it yet. But I, I have a feeling one of these days he will break through. So maybe this is the day. It is the right matchup, as you said. All right, let's talk about Detroit KC. It's going to be the second of a double to header, so keep an eye out for lineups. We don't know who's exactly going to play. I will, uh, you know, we had earlier we had Fado as the uh, as the as the pitcher. It's going to be Pineda as of right now is what I have. Pretty much any Detroit pitcher, I'm going to have some interest in KC here. So uh, they would be number three for me behind San Diego and Texas. Um, well, I guess Colorado too, but San Diego, Colorado, and Texas, and then it would be. Uh, these guys for me uh in kc and uh look we're talking about spending down if brad keller is in fact pitching in this game and again i keep getting different information because of the double header but he's a he's a he's at least got a leash and he's 5.5 um so if you want if you want if you want the weird value there's some guys available for you today but i'm siding mostly with the kc bats in this one especially bobby witt and uh if Whit merrifield plays it would be Whit merrifield but melendez and witt stand out as really good plays yeah, first of all, as he mentioned, uh, as as uh, as Bobby mentioned, watch the um, watch the lineups, um, um, watch the lineups here because the second end of the doubleheader. But as I mentioned, kind of earlier, I do like Kansas City. Is and I and again, who who do you think's going to be like the popular pivot? Is it going to be more Texas, or do you think it's going to be Kansas City? I, I think it's one of those two. I right? think Kansas City, but. I'm not a hundred percent. It's hard to know without knowing the lineup. And then if the lineup comes in late for any reason, because the double header, then it could change things. Um, but as of right now, I would assume that it'd be KC um, ahead of, ahead of uh, Texas. I only mentioned it because you, you kind of had this sense as you were going over the Texas thing that, that, that the industry might kind of get a little momentum on it. Um, they will, but the momentum's already on KC. Like, okay. I see okay. KC guys projected to be 30% owned, like three guys. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so I, 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 and I see nobody above 15 and nobody, and no, only one guy above 15 and nobody above 8% other than him on uh, Texas. So early on, it's definitely KC, but I, I think it'll balance out a little bit. I don't think it'll fully balance out. It's my guess. But the um, other thing I wanted to mention, by the way, is just below all these others is, I mean, you had mentioned Brad, uh, Brad Keller. Um, I, I kind of have Detroit a little bit um, as, as a possibility. Again, I would just, yeah. it always seems like you're grasping at straws in course late, but that's kind of what you have to do um, yep. is grasp at straws. And um, so they're, they're going to be in my, they're going to be in my pool, the Detroit guys. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'll just kind of leave it at that. Detroit, Kansas city, Texas, and then, you know, uh, that first game as well. Yeah, I mean, Detroit is, uh, they usually score zero to three runs, and then every now and then they <laughs> score 11. <laughs> it's, it's, they're weird like that. I mean, they do have, they do have, I think there is some upside, Riley Green, Eric Haas, and, uh, and uh, Javi Baez being my favorite plays. But uh, yeah, we'll see who's even in the lineup, because uh, again, that's going to be interesting to see, because we, we may not get it till a little bit late because of the, uh, the first game playing uh, today, so... 
All right, so we move over to Colorado. All right, Sheets, why don't you start this one off and, and say- Yeah, that okay, so, for, so, so the, fir the first thing I'd like to mention is that um, Sean Manaya is, is, is definitely not gonna project to be a good play because he's in Colorado, right? Um, also, you have some good pitchers on the slate. Um, uh, Scherzer and Nola, and then there's the natural kind of safety type play down to, to Freed as well, who mm -hmm. might be a decent play. Um, I got a feeling that that Manaya is going to be zero percent owned. Um, yep. You're right and, about that. <laughs> and I and I and I think and I, and I think he's he, I think he's playable here. Um, again, once you said once once again, it's it's an uber chalk slate. So in an uber chalk slate, I'm I'm looking for anything. Yep. Um, and I, I, I just think he, I just think he's playable. I think Colorado, he stinks. Um, yes, they're, they're be obviously better at home and everybody's, everybody's get good in Colorado, but if you get a, like a very short slate, I mean, a guy with upside and, and, you know, who knows, I mean, this is what you got to do <laughs> in Colorado. That's what you, that's what you got to do nowadays. Um, so I definitely think he's in play, but aside from that, uh, like I said, in cash games, I think these are the two, both these are the two mm -hmm. best stacks on the slate. I mean, San Diego and then probably then Colorado if you send it up, you know, just say who's going to score the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody's cheap in San Diego. Um, and again, well, you crazy know, crazy cheap. What's crazy that? Cheap. Like crazy cheap. Yeah. So, okay. So here's, so here's, here's the same thing. So every, every time I'm going to give the same speech. So when, when, when one team rates like San Diego to be that, that much ahead of everybody else, a couple of choices. If you choose to play them, uh, you can play them with, with, with non chalk pitchers. Like you want to play with no shirts or Nola, for example, or you could play San Diego and, and just kind of screw around with the construction, like make sure to only play the most expensive guys, for example, or mm -hmm. make sure to not play one, two, three, four, five, wherever that goes, you know, mm -hmm. or, or may, or maybe just as Bobby sometimes does, you know, just maybe just make sure to take like two guys in this game or something like that, mm -hmm. or two guys or something like that. Um, or just, just completely fade them. And you just have to I think all those different approaches kind of have some merit. Um, I mean, can yet, I throw one, one more approach in there? Yeah. I'm going to give you one more. Yeah. I was going to say like on a slate like this, as Bob was just kind of, I like, may be alluding to, you can play San Diego's and leave like 4,000 on the table yep. or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah it's going to feel so uncomfortable to do it, but it's probably, it's probably going to score just as many fantasy points as if you don't leave the 4,000 on the table. Right. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. I, I mean, you could legitimately play Scherzer and Nola and leave plenty on the table with a full stack of San Diego. <laughs> and I think that's something right. that people just aren't going to do. Um, yeah. Um, you like any Manaya? It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just I, I mean, the fifth best team in baseball against lefties uh, becomes the best team in, against lefties at home in, in Colorado. Oh. It's a little hard for me to get there. If he was like 7,200 or 8,200, I could maybe make a case. But again, I don't need the money really. So I don't know why I'm even saying that. I, yeah. I, I think that I'm more on the Colorado side of things, but it wouldn't surprise me if he just went out there and pitched a good game. There's a lot out there. I mean, he throws like a 60% of the time he's throwing a sinker ball. And if people say that will be affected in Colorado. There's definitely mixed thoughts on that. Colorado's always sought out pitchers to pitch for their team who throw sinker balls. But at the same time, like, because it's still not going to drop quite as much. So Overall, it's probably a stay away for me, but I, I, I don't mind it in like a, you know, in a few, a few entries out of 150 or something like that. Oh. I don't think I'd go more than that. What, what, what's the weather in San Francisco today? 60 degrees, same as always, just nuts. I mean, this could be a, this could be a game to play the pitchers. I, and, and quite yeah. honestly, I don't mind playing either of them. I mean, I mean we, listen, we, we talk about Merrill Kelly, whatever. The guy's been, uh, that's been not bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not bad. Um, yeah. And uh, I think Alex, yeah, Alex, you know, Alex Cobb, I mean, Alex Cobb stinks, but uh, whatever. I mean, I don't know, but I think I both these guys are probably in playing bad. If it's only 60 degrees, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Cobb is reasonably. We just saw this matchup in Arizona and they were both fine, the pitchers in real life. Uh, Cobb didn't put up a big game because he didn't get any strikeouts, but um. I, I, I'm okay with either of them. Uh, I, I'm not going to play Merrill Kelly. And actually I have the Giants as my number five offense. There you go. Um, so that's one of my ways that I could get weird is I'll, I'll, I'll incorporate some of, you might get Lamont Wade with some ownership because he's 2.4 leading off. 
but Brandon Crawford's 2.3, Luis, and these, like, that's something you could do is if you played like a five-man Colorado and a three-man San Francisco, you would be leaving 4,000 on the table, even if you played uh, Scherzer and Nola. So that is definitely something I'm flirting with the idea of doing, at least in some of the large field stuff. Um, and, and, I, and I think, you know, Brandon Belt, uh, 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 Jock Peterson, this is, should be a decent home run spot for them. So I, I don't mind getting to some San Francisco bats. It's just, it's always gross to play when there's games in the nine, mid nineties to play a game in the sixties against pitchers that have been pretty competent so far this season. That's my only issue. Um, but I, I do, I do for what it's worth. I, I do think that I, I, I would encourage people on these kind of slates. To, this is a time where you want to take some funny shots. And I think San Francisco is one of those funny shots that I'll be taking. Um, I did for what it's worth guys post all of my early builds. I posted my, uh, bets of the day. I posted my, uh, I have all my, my core plays are up on Saber Sim right now through two DFS. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm ready to go sheets. Any other thoughts before we get out of here on this slate? No, except for the fact that, uh, I'm, 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 I am, pro- I think that again, three different approaches. I think today's slate play San Diego, leave money on the table. Don't play San Diego at all, or play San Diego with 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 no with no Scherzer. I think that's that's that those are the, I think those are probably the the, the options as far as GPPs go. I don't think I don't think you can play Scherzer with with the, the, your straight Padre stack. I don't know how he can do it. I mean, you right. could you do it. It's probably the best thing to do, but, but I don't think he, he can do it in GPPs. Right, right. Gotcha. Yep. I uh, I agree. Um, I, I'm going to be using my San Diego with Texas KC and then some San Francisco and that works. We'll also play some Colorado, uh, but probably not Colorado with San Diego. It just seems like you're just doing the wrong thing st- strategically for baseball yeah. on that. Although oddly enough, there's been a lot of chalk hitting lately in baseball, man. It's Is that true? Pretty, yeah. Like on Friday, I mean, it was Atlanta and 14 games late and Atlanta and the Yankees were everybody was like 20% owned or whatever. And they just, they They just smashed, just just went nuts. Like it was, it was just like one of those perfect spots. And then, and then that was what tilted me though, is because I had a, I had a real chance in the ninth inning. They bring in Jackie Bradley Jr. to pitch for, for Boston to the Yankees. He strikes out LeMay, who never strikes out. And I mean, it's Jackie Bradley Jr. You're expecting at least a couple runs there. And then they end up getting nothing. Judge pops out. I'm like, Oh my God, I had a chance to at least, because even with the chalk, I had two pieces that weren't and in, in those stacks. And then that was all you needed to win. But uh didn't quite get enough anyway all right sheets well it's good to have you back man and um i'm gonna be live at six sheets you yeah i i I, i'm i'm planning on it It just depends on when when dinner is tonight we'll see how it goes okay all right well we will see i'll see you guys at six either way uh good luck to everyone today and uh yeah hopefully we'll see you guys at the top of leaderboards all right see you later